in life, things, systems, friends protect us. It's the same in the workplace. When designing facilities and procedures, people identify hazards, assess the most important risks, and analyze the most serious accident scenarios. And they put in place the defense system that prevents these accidents. With not one, not two, but three lines of defense. I've called them prevention, recovery, and mitigation. How does it work? Let's take a look with Matthew. His task? To work on an electrical installation. The potential risk? Electric shock or even electrocution. It could be very serious or even fatal. Come on, let's go. The first step? Prevention barriers, which are designed to eliminate exposure to the hazard. Here, Matthew must of course have been trained and be qualified to carry out the work. And the installation must be switched off and locked out before working on it. If this doesn't happen... Matthew takes a step closer to a high potential situation. Now recovery barriers come into play. These barriers make it possible to recover from an at-risk situation. Matthew can check that the electricity has been disconnected by using an approved device. An alarm can be triggered automatically. A colleague can alert him. But if none of this happens, then a hazardous event can occur. Matthew takes another step closer to the accident. Now the mitigation barriers can only limit any damage and reduce the severity of the consequences. Is Matthew wearing all his protective equipment? Has he put down an insulating mat? If not... Game over. So taking steps to anticipate scenarios that could have very serious consequences, setting up the three lines of defense and ensuring that they work could save your life. Or almost, because we know that life can throw up unexpected events. The production schedule is changed at the last minute. Equipment doesn't work. A colleague falls sick. A manager who doesn't care much about safety. All of these disruptive factors can weaken the defense system. I know you're going to say, this may happen to everyone and it doesn't always lead to an accident. Yes, but if each of these disturbances may seem harmless in isolation, their combination is much more dangerous. Fortunately, having people on the ground can be a game changer. They can identify disruptors and put fixes in place. Stopping the system to check what's happening, replacing equipment, additional resources, and our barriers are as good as new. There you are. All we have to do now is learn from this experience to make even more improvements to the system's defenses. So let's see. To sum things up, we need to identify the most serious, major, or even fatal accident risks, draw up scenarios of high potential situations, ensure the long-term effectiveness of the defense system, and encourage people to share intelligence to strengthen recovery. Encourage shared vigilance and feedback. We need all of these four winning cards to work safely.